right guys, we are out here for the review on the Leopard from Yoda Bike. Before we dive into the review, I wanna show you something really cool. So I can get that on the screen over here. It's a little bit warm out here for that. Okay, there you go. So it has a auto off thing and it has this little timer that counts down to it, which is kind of fun. I don't know what's coming across in the camera here. Just that's something I hadn't seen before. You know, normally it'll, you sit that in the, in the screen and then bada bing, bada boom, it shuts off at some point, but this gives you a little countdown clock, which is pretty cool. I'll go ahead and turn it off. We'll see if some battery here. Goodbye. Now let's go ahead and talk about this bad boy. So right out of the gate, this is a big bike. We've got these CST roly polies on here, 26 by 4.8 inches. And these things are massive. If you think that the regular 26 by four inch tires are big, these are even bigger. It's full suspension. So up here in the front, we've got our front fork suspension. We do get a couple of adjustments there. And then in the back, we've got our four link suspension here. Seems to be set up and tuned pretty well. And it's a fairly comfortable bike to ride. The tires are rated for 30 PSI. I've got them both at about 20 right now. When I initially got the bike, they were all a little low. So I was riding around town testing it at those lower PSIs. And yeah, it's even comfortable. It just makes a little bit more noise and we're not gonna get as good of range on it. Let's talk about the motor. So the motor here, it is a thousand watt nominal motor. So it's gonna peak much higher than that. It's not necessarily tuned like you would think it would be. So it does take off a little bit slower, but then it hits those top speeds um, pretty well after that. So it's kind of a little bit of a power curve, you know, a little bit of a flatter power curve, and then it picks up and gets up to those top speeds. This is a bike that's super easy to unlock. We went in there into the advanced menu, which is super simple. You just hold down the set button, and then there's a general menu and an advanced menu. All of it's very clear, very easy to adjust some of the things in here, which I really liked. Uh, and I hadn't seen this particular display before or at least the menu that's loaded up in this display and so yeah it just it was it was nice it's, it was easy to uh to pop in there and, and do stuff so for somebody who likes getting a bike and tweaking some things then that's something you can do the controller is only set to 15 amps and we could probably pull a little bit more out of this bike but like i said that's kind of how it sits right now and let's talk about the bike itself right this is a bike review so we talked about the motor thousand watt you know just make sure with your logo regulations if that is gonna you know affect you or not if you guys aren't being you know dumb then it might not matter at least you know most places here in the u.s you know we're in beautiful texas it's like 102 degrees out here today so luckily we've got a slight breeze so it's not uh it's not horrible but enough about the weather, let's talk about the brakes. So the brakes, we do have these hydraulic brakes. Now these are thicker rotors, which I found to be pretty interesting. Uh, stopping wise, they are pretty good. I don't think these are 203s, but these tires are so big, it's actually kind of hard for me to tell. I'm looking for some, some numbers here. I think they're 180s, but I don't see any marks. That's right, I, I had checked and hadn't seen any. So that would be my guess. My guess is they're 180s. I was just on the uh, the Zoo's UU 1200 Flex this morning. That has two or three rotors and it seems a little bit bigger even though these giant tires kind of dwarf that. The brakes up here, we do have these handles. The handles are okay, not too shabby, but it's an interesting design. So if you look, I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. This is actually clear so you can see the hydraulic fluid in here, which is kind of interesting you know, I, I got some mountain bikes and some other bikes that have hydraulic brakes and you never really know what that fluid is doing until you, know, you can start to touch the handles to the grips, which isn't good. But it's cool, you can look in there and you can see the state of it. So I don't know if that's super helpful. It was just, again, sort of a unique thing that I haven't seen in a lot of e-bikes. Up here in the front, we do have this integrated front light. Not terribly bright, but it's a little bit brighter than say like the standard affordable e-bike light that we see coming on those bikes that are anywhere between you know 1200 to 1500 so you do get a little bit of a brighter light here if you wanted to take this thing off-road and it is you know off-road ready I would probably suggest mounting some sort of third-party larger thousand lumen something up there so you can really get a good view of what's in front of you especially if it's uh, if it's at night we've got seven speeds here 
Got our SIS index shifter up here in the front. Tried, trusted, true. You guys know how I feel about those. And then back here we've got our Shimano turning derailleur. So nice to see some Shimano parts here. There's a lot of other pro wheel parts. So we got pro wheel cranks. We've got a Pro Max headset here or stem, excuse me. And for the most part, this is full of components that we have, you know, that we're used to seeing, but there are some extra things. The extra thick rotors, that was one. The display is another. Um, right here at the throttle, we've got an on off button here. So if, you know, somebody's hopping on it and they're not used to a throttle, they're not used to an e-bike, you can turn this off and just kind of keep them from, you know, accidentally hitting the throttle or something like that. So that's a nice little safety feature. I'm gonna plug it back in because uh, for a little bit, I thought the throttle just wasn't working. And I looked down there and I was like, oh yeah, there's a little, little safety button there. Yeah, and then, you know, we got the, the see-through guy right there. And so for the most part, this is pretty standard componentry, but what they've built here is kind of a monster. I mean, it is, it is large. It's fairly comfortable to ride. You know, when you're looking at those bikes that are $2,800, $3,200, which this kind of looks like some of those bikes, those ones have a little bit more of a, you know, luxurious ride feel. They'll have different suspension and things like that. But for this price point, this is a pretty sweet bike. Now, right off the bat, before we jump into the ride test and doing some other fun stuff, there's two things as it stands right now that I would swap out. And that would be the saddle. The saddle's not horrible. It just doesn't seem to really fit the vibe of this bike. The saddle's a little bit weird in my opinion. It just doesn't fit me quite right. It's a little bit too wide. God, that is hot. Wow. Yes, it's definitely 102 degrees out here. And the grips. So if you are taking this off-road, you're doing some trails, things like that, these grips do slide a little bit. And now that they're heating up uh, a little bit more so than back in the garage. So I would want to put something on here that has at least one, if not two locking mechanisms. And then we've got a nice secure grip on here. And if we swap out the saddle, saddles are something that's easy to swap. Anybody could do that. So if you find one or you already know you've got a favorite saddle, this is going to be an easy thing to swap out. But other than that, I'm really digging the vibe. So let's go ahead and jump into the ride test and I'll show you guys what the ride feels like. All right, we have hopped on the bike. I didn't shift down all the way, but it's better than normal. Normally I have it in seven. So let's go ahead and turn the bike on. We got our power button right over here. Press and hold that. And the display comes to life. Again, it's super bright out here. So I don't know how much of this is coming through. It is a fairly bright display. Actually, I can see a little bit better with my polarized sunglasses on, which is normally not the case with screen. So that is cool that it's gonna work with the polarization of some sunglasses. Cause if you're riding around in something like this, you're wearing sunglasses. So your corneas don't get burnt out. This display is gonna tell us a couple things. Again, I don't know if you can see it all. It, I'll review the footage and if I can see it and you can see it, awesome. Otherwise I'll put a picture somewhere, somewhere where you can see it. So we have got our battery right here. So it's gonna give us bars. It looks like there's five bars and it's also gonna tell us our voltage. So right now we're sitting at 50.7 volts. We got our miles per hour, which is gonna be on this side of the display. And then we've got our wattage, which is gonna be on this side of the display. And then it's gonna tell you our total miles, what mode we're in. So right now we're in power mode and that's something you can do. You can jump into the settings and maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. If you guys are interested, maybe we could do a video about that. And then this is gonna be our up and down for pedal assist. It's in pedal assist level one. If it's in pedal assist level zero, the throttle's not gonna work. But as soon as we put it into pedal assist level one, we're gonna get some juice out of the bike. And like I mentioned, it is not a speed demon sort of in that lower, you know, zero to 10 mile per hour. It's not, you know, taking off on you all crazy. But once you kind of hit that 10 mile an hour mark, it just kind of keeps accelerating where a lot of other bikes start to, you know, kind of implement some power curve stuff. But uh, once you get over 10, this thing just picks up. We're at 15 right there. Couldn't let these guys go. And we'll continue on our way here. Yeah, look like Willie Nelson. Now, when the bike ships, it should allow you to access the full power of the bike through all the gears. But if for some reason you want to swap that in the advanced settings, or maybe it's in the general settings, you can swap that. 
But I mean, we're throttle only. We're going, uh, we're hitting 28. Are we hitting 28? There it is, 28. And we are cruising. Sitting high on these five inch tires. Yeah, we are cruising. So even though we're in pedal assist level one, we still have access to all the power. Hey, that was pretty comfy. That was pretty comfy. Now, luckily for you guys and myself, the trails are open, so we we'll definitely have to take this bike off road. And I hope you can hear me pretty good because the wind is kind of kicking. I think we're kind of going into it. Let's go ahead and do a brake test. So we're going about 24, 25. I guess about 27. Not too shabby. It's probably about 15 to 18 feet, somewhere in there. I was trying not to skid, but if you want to skid, you can skid them right out the gate. So you have all the control when it comes to the braking here. So let's go ahead and head off into the trails. Maybe my GoPro mount won't. Uh... That's crazy. I went through that uh, little, little dip right there on a 20 inch tire the other day. And it was kind of like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And this one just rolled through it like it was nothing. Wow, cruising, that's throttle only. Yeah, it's going through some of these like dips and larger bumps. Like nothing. Okay. Yeah, and the other, oh, there's a tree here. The other aspect of the throttle is when you first hit on it, there is a little bit of a delay there. Nothing too crazy, but it's not one of those things where you hit it and just punches out. So just be aware of that if you're you know, trying to get yourself out of a sticky situation. You have to react a little bit quicker than maybe you'd like to. Man, this is, this is fun. It's kind of like riding around on a two wheel ATV basically. Yeah, that, that is all right. Let's go ahead and there's a hill here. I'm gonna shift into one. And we'll do Pelsis level five. And we'll hit it. This thing's pretty gnarly. Hold on, GoPro. Hold on. Oh, that was my fault. Uh, did not accelerate through that enough. We're just hitting the throttle, just climbed right up there. Excuse me, B. So that is pretty fun. Now we're just cruising. Yeah, unlocking the bike and having access to go, you know, 28 plus miles an hour with the throttle is pretty sweet. Go ahead and hit down here. Now again, the only the only thing on this bike right now that is kind of keeping this from being a as you know safe or comfortable as it could be is the grips so they are moving a little bit on me like i mentioned they're moving a little bit more now that it's hot outside than in the garage but you know for 15 bucks you replace that you get a cool color cool little accent color on there and, you know i like doing that with with my bikes anyway so there's some things that just you know they aren't really a big deal to switch and uh Grips is definitely one of those things. Whoa, man, that is fun. All right, we got a big old drop to an incline here. Throttle only, didn't pedal once. See, that's fun. All the fun of going through the little single track here. None of the work of pedaling. Not the best. 
but also it's fun to come out and do a little exercising on a traditional mountain bike as well. So not knocking it whatsoever. Woo. Wait. I feel like that section has changed a little bit. Woo. Again, really just rolling through this thing. This has definitely been recently built out. This is cool. Thank you to all the trail builders out there. <coughs> Appreciate what you do. Oh, we got options, a little high-low action here. And I think the only thing that's keeping this from being a little extra sporty as far as a uh, ride field goes is that delay on the throttle. Well guys, GoPro got me again. We did some cool stuff, you wouldn't even believe it. We hit this ramp, we jumped about 10, maybe even 15 feet up in the air. It was incredible, fortunately, but we didn't capture any of it. Shout out to you trail builders <laughs> out there. Guys, that is gonna do it for us. Like I mentioned, there's really only three things I would switch on this bike, and that would be the grips, the saddle, and again, you might not need to, that's just my opinion. And it's gonna be this rear shock right here. So we got this HLT 100, and we've seen this on some of the you know lower end, smaller e-bikes, and it's more or less to put it on there to say it's full suspension. And if we had something like the A2 or A8, whatever it's called, that Himaway uses on their Cobra model, that would be okay, that'd be a decent upgrade from this. But then if we wanna take it a step further, and we look at people like Cy Rusher with their Ranger and Trax models, they've got full, you know, customization on here. There's lots of different dials and doodads you can swap to, you know, with your vamping and your vamping. How's it going? You good? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm excellent. Thank you. Everybody out here is so friendly. Let's make sure you're okay. But uh, nice to review an e-bike. Thank you, partner. Thank you. He's he can't hear me. Like I said, that one is more adjustable. You can put air in there. This one, I don't believe, is air. Yeah, I think this is just a spring. So. That also would add quite a bit of awesomeness to the ride feel. Other than that, I mean, because I was looking at this thing, and I was like, okay, what are the things that we need to call out as far as, you know, issues? Here in the back, don't really see anything. You know, this functions well. We have this, you know, just like plastic chain guard here, which is nice, or chain guide, rather. It'd be cool to see something a little bit more robust. But as far as pedaling goes, even going, you know, 28 plus miles an hour, there wasn't any ghost paddling or anything like that, which is pretty sweet. You know, you can always upgrade the forks, right? Throw on some Fox, throw on some, you know, something else. No, I don't see them doing that on this bike. The front forks are fine. Obviously, you know, we, we use up every bit of length there. So, you know, we put it, we put it through its paces. The only thing that I've noticed as far as like the build out, you know, we look at geometry like, oh, did they mess this up? Did they mess that up? Something with some of these down tube batteries. Is there gonna be enough room to take the battery out? Yes, you can take the battery out pretty simply. The only thing I found is that on the front wheel, and I'll see if I can get a good shot of this. I'm gonna shove my microphone in this wheel. I'll wing just look at it from the other side. Wow, look at that, how cool is that? So when you see right here, the front brake, that rubbing right here is from one of the spokes. And I don't know if one of them is loose or what, but this sticks out quite a bit. And it is, it rubs every once in a while. You'll hear it kind of like, just, you know, do a rubbing noise on there or whatever. But as far as geometry goes, that's pretty much the only thing I noticed. The head tube angle, I don't remember if I said that after it cut off or not. We talked about the head tube angle. It could be a little bit slacker, but I mean, it's really not too bad. It's not straight up and down pretty decent. I don't know exactly what the angle is, but it felt pretty good. And because we got these big tires, having, you know, a slightly steeper head tube angle than say, you know, a traditional downhill mountain bike or something like that.
means we're going to be able to control it a little bit better. And because these wheels are so big, it does kind of give you a little bit of that control back while still not being straight up and down, right? Like this is a fairly comfortable geometry as far as that goes. So all in all, honestly, pretty impressed with it. Right now, I think it's going for like 2000 2100 bucks, something like that. And so if I was going to spend 2100 bucks, get this, I'd swap out that. So you're looking at another, I don't know, 150 bucks to, to swap that out. Saddle, 20 bucks, or maybe you already have one. And grips are 15 bucks. So this could be, with another you know, $200 investment on top of that, a pretty dope all-terrain, off-road, you know, jump-ready kind of bike. So those are my thoughts. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below, and we'll catch you on the next one.